present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> the Armoured Might of Lance Corporal Jones, featuring John Lorray and James Beck, with this week's guests, Bill Pertwee, Pearl Hackney, and Richard Davis. <laughs> Here is the latest news, and this is John Snag reading it. As Nazi aggression continues, the Hun is prepared to stop at nothing in his relentless determination to become the master of Europe. Even the use of nerve gas is not beneath him. Ever alert to these eventualities, Captain Mannering, commander of the Warmington-on-Sea Home Guard platoon, is briefing his men on the hazards of gas warfare. They are all wearing gas masks. Now, the gases in the hatch are must have felt the interior of children. And that concludes my lecture on the various types of gases <laughs> that the enemy will be liable to use. Anything worrying you? He listen to speak, sir. What did he say was... I couldn't quite catch it, sir. <laughs> I can't understand a word you're saying. Take that gas mask off. Oh, 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 oh. Better. I said I couldn't quite catch it, sir. I don't want to know what you said. I want to know what Jones said. <laughs> Ask him. All right, sir. Jones, uh, Captain Manning wants to know what you said. I said permission to speak, sir. Thank you. He wants permission to speak, sir. Well, of course, permission to speak. Ask him what he wants to say. What do you want to say, Jones? I can't hear a word he's saying. <laughs> he said uh, he couldn't hear a word that you've been saying, sir. You mean to say that he, he's never heard a word of that lecture I gave? I uh, know. <coughs> well, did the rest of you hear? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going over all that again. <laughs> All right, remove your respirators and put them away. Oh. <laughs> we'll continue this lecture tomorrow. Now, I want to introduce you to a new weapon. You see this piece of wire? Can anyone tell me what it is? Aye, it's a grocer's cheese cutter, sir. <laughs> Correct, Fraser. A harmless cheese cutter. But properly applied, it can become a deadly weapon. Now, I'll tell you the story of how I got the idea for using this as a weapon. Excuse me, sir. Is this going to be a long story? Why? <laughs> well, I was wondering if the men should stand easy. Oh, yeah. yes, very well. All right, then. All right, uh, stand easy. All right, sir. You can carry on now. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> now, this is an example of improvisation at its best. A few days ago, I went to get the week's rations for my wife and myself from the grocers. As he cut off our meagre ration of cheese, I thought, why am I getting such a little piece? And as the wire cut through the cheese, it turned from a lovely yellow cheddar to a nasty white Limburger. And as it dropped off the cutting board on a marble slab, it then turned into the head of a Nazi paratrooper. <laughs> That's it, I thought. Just the thing for dealing with the enemy's sentries. Creep up behind him, then you lob the wire around his neck like so, and pull it tight. Result? Instant decapitation. He doesn't even know what's happened. Not until he nods his head. <laughs> What did you say, Walk? I said he'd be better off in bed, sir. <laughs> he would indeed. So, it's round the neck, pull tight, ah, instant decapitation. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Jones? Permission to be sick, sir. Yes, carry on. <laughs> That's not like an old campaigner like Jones. Nah, he's all talk. He's got no stomach when it comes to the real thing. I can't understand his feeling sick just because I mentioned decapitation. It's not that, sir. He just doesn't like cheese. Oh. <laughs> now, pay attention, men. I've just received a communication from JHQ saying that there is not enough cooperation between the ARP and the Home Guard, and that in future we must both work together for the common cause. I'm oh, sorry about that, sir. I don't know what came over me. You feeling better now, Joan? Yes, thank you, sir. Good. JHQ also says that the Chief Warden will be calling on us tonight to discuss various means of cooperation. By the way, who is the Chief Warden, Wilson? Oh, it's a terribly common man, you know, uh, Mr. Hodges. You know, he, he banks with us. <laughs> Hodges? Well, how can they make him Chief Warden? Man's a greengrocer. Yes, that's right, sir, yes, yes. <laughs> he's the one with dirty fingernails. <laughs> how do you know he's got dirty fingernails? Well, I can see them every time he pushes his takings under the grill. He keeps the shop next to me, sir. And ever since he's been made Chief Warden, there's been no hold in the man. You're right, Fraser. He's become drunk with power. Yes, sir. Nasty bit of work he is, sir. You want to put your foot down. Otherwise, before you know where you are, he'll be taking over from you. <laughs> I'd like to see him try. Right. Well, then, who's in charge here? You know perfectly well who's in charge here, Mr. Hodges. Can't you see the pips on my shoulder? 
Oh, it's Mr. Mannering, the bank manager. It's Captain Mannering, and this is Sergeant Wilson. How do you do? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you're still the bank manager, and Wilson's your chief clerk. I can't forget his... Every time I go to the bank with my takings, he gives me a dirty look. That matches his nails. Walk up. <laughs> what did he say? Nothing. Oh, yes. You want to keep those blokes in line, Mannering? Do you mind not prodding me like that? <laughs> I'll do more than prod if I get any more smart remarks. Now, I've had instructions that we're supposed to cooperate, so I'll just tell you once. I want this all every Wednesday evening for ARP lectures. Got it? I'm afraid that's quite out of the question. What are you talking about? I have a parade here every Wednesday evening. That's your hard luck, mate. I have a long-standing arrangement with the vicar. <laughs> what goes on between you and the vicar is entirely your affair. <laughs> all I know is I want this all every Wednesday. Got it? Has no one told you that it's rude to point? Just to make sure you get the point, that's all. Every Wednesday, right? I get the all, right? You're absolutely right, Wilson. His fingernails are filthy. <laughs> all right, all right, ladies, don't push, don't push. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Leonard. Morning, Mr. Jones. Now, what can I have? Well, let's have a look at your ration books. Ah, well, you haven't got very much here, have you, Mrs. Leonard? Are you sure you're looking at them properly? Well, I know, my eyesight's not too good, Mrs. Leonard, but I can see you a shilling's worth left on each book. Oh, dear, is that all? Well, you shouldn't have had that joint on Friday. Oh, it's not my fault, Mr. Jones, it's my husband. He has to have his bit of brisket every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can let you have three lamb chops. Yeah, they come to one and eight. I'm afraid you have to have the bacon corned beef. There we are. That comes to exactly two, Bob. How's that? Oh, thank you. Here, this is for you. Hey? Yeah, well, it's a tin of your favourite tobacco. <laughs> I'll be back again in a few days. <laughs> <laughs> She's given him something. Hey, what's she up to? Hey, have you got any sausages? Well, I could let you have a couple, Mrs. Leonard. Oh, he's got sausages. Sausages? Yes, all right, all right, ladies. Please, please. <laughs> I can only let you have one sausage for each book. <laughs> Take two and four, please, Miss Modera. Right, next lady, please. Oh, good morning, Miss Meadows. Here you are, Mr. Jones. What's this? Just a little cake I made for your tea. She brought in some cake. Oh, thank you very much, Miss Meadows. I hope you didn't use up too many points making it. You can have my points any time, Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, you deserve looking after. No one can accuse you of not doing your bit. As a butcher, you look after our insides, and as a home guard, you protect our outsides. What's it to be then, Miss Meadows? Oh, I'll take it all in corned beef. Do you want your sausage? Oh, yes, I'll have my sausage. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure the other ladies were as easy as you, Miss Meadows. Well, I'll try to please. Take two and four, please, Miss Mortimer. Hang on, excuse me, ladies. It's all right, all right, ladies. It's all right, all right. Keep calm. It's only me. I'm here on business. We all know what your business is. <laughs> now, I ask you, ladies, is that nice? No. Come on, now. Do. What is it, Walker? No, I want to talk to you, Jonesy. It's urgent and private. Oh, well, I'll take you somewhere private. Come on, then. Look after the shop for a minute, Miss Mortimer. All right, Mr. Jones. This way, Joe. Come on. Blimey, what do you want to bring us in here for? It's freezing. Push <laughs> the cold storage. This is the only place we can't be overheard in. Yeah, listen, Jonesy. Have you still got that old delivery van of yours? Yeah. Does it go? It does. I just can't get any petrol for it. Yeah, look, I've got an idea. Why don't you offer it to Captain Mannering as platoon transport? It's a butcher's van. Yeah, well, you'd have to do it up a bit first. It's been in my family for years, that van. I don't think I'd like it knocked about. Anyway, why are you suddenly so interested in it? Why? Well, it's like this, you see. It's... Oh. <laughs> oh. Why do you have to have this place so cold? <laughs> <laughs> You've only got one... <laughs> Frozen rabbit in here. You <laughs> make <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, no, 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 listen. If, 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 if you let them use your van, I have to give you the petrol coupons for it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could uh, get petrol. I can get p p petrol. It's the coupons. They're worth ten bob each. Well, it's just, uh, uh, <laughs> So, uh, sounds a bit dodgy, me. No. Look, 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 don't, don't worry. Leave it to me. Come on, let's get out of here. It's, 
It's a good job we're not brass monkeys. <laughs> We'd be in need of a welding job. <laughs> Stand back, man. Stand back. Give the man room to get in. There we are, sir. What do you think of her? Oh, absolutely first class, Jones. This must be a proud moment for you. That, that is, sir. Listen, man. Corporal Jones and Private Walker have worked on this vehicle non-stop for the past three days. And now Corporal Jones will show us the result of all their hard work. But before we start, sir, I am the official driver, aren't I? I mean, that's all right with you, isn't it, Captain? Oh, yes, yes, of course it is, Jones. Excuse me, sir. Do you think that's wise? Of course it's wise. We've got to let him drive it. His van. Well, I'm not too keen on the idea, sir. You're never too keen on anything, are you? <laughs> right, Jones, carry on. Right, thank you, sir. Now, if you all come round the back of the van, I shall explain. Right. Open the doors, Joe. Here's the keys. Sir, right. There we are. Now then, this is an all-purpose vehicle. Firstly, it can be used as an armoured car. If you look inside, you'll observe the sandbags stacked alongside. That makes it bulletproof. It can also be used as an ambulance. You'll observe we have put racks in for the stretchers. And lastly, but not least, sleep. <laughs> it's a troop transport, in which case you sit on a floor, which you will observe I have covered with marble slabs. <laughs> hey, I'm not sitting on those, Captain Ringham. My doctor says it's very bad for each of certain cold things. <laughs> what are those marble slabs for, Jones? Well, at my shop, sir. I put them on the floor in case we go over landmines. <laughs> it's protection, you see, sir. Now, pay attention, everybody. Uh, what we've got to do is to work out a drill so that the whole platoon can embark and disembark. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, sir? I've, uh, I've already done that, sir. You've what? Perhaps you'd like to see it in action. <laughs> I certainly would, Wilson. All right, sir, right. Right, first section, line up at the rear of the van. Steps in position, Walker. Get all ready, Sergeant. Oh, hurry up, then. All right, prepare to mount transport. All right. Up the steps. Two, three. Into the van. Two, three. All right, man. Take up your attack positions. All right, uh, right here. Now, sir, I want you, if you will, I want you to imagine that the vehicle is going along the road. Well, in that case, I'd better be driving it then, Sergeant. All right, very well, Jones. Right, I'll go and pretend to go and start up the engine. All right. 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 Right, Sergeant, I pretended to start it. All right, good. Huh? I'll get into the driving seat. Right, Sergeant. Right. Right. Nom, 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 nom. Uh, Jones, you might find it easy if you took the bayonet off your rifle. Oh, yes, of course. I wonder why I was having a bit of trouble getting in. <laughs> now, do be careful, Jones, with that bent for heaven's sake. You nearly punctured the tyre then. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. All ready now, Sergeant. All right, off you go then. Now, sir, the men are inside, and the vehicle is moving along the road. Yes, I rather gathered that. Now, sir, watch those at the porthole covers on the side of the van. Right. Enemy on the left, range 100 yards, lines rapid fire. Gun ports open, two, three. Rifles out, two, three. Bang! 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 See, the porthole, see, sir, open to allow the rifles through, see? You never cease to amaze me. <laughs> see, I am keen, sir, I really am. I, I'm as keen as you are. It's just that I, well, I have a terrible job in showing it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I understand, Wilson. Right. Nim, 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 Oh, right. We've arrived. Yes. <laughs> oi, 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 oi. What's going on here? I've never heard such a row. Is there anything wrong, Warden? Yes. This Wednesday night, you know, and I'm trying to give a lecture in the hall. Well, nobody's stopping you. How do you think I can make myself heard with you lot shouting bang, bang, bang all the time? What are you doing? Playing cowboys and Indians? We're trying out our new ambulance troop carrier. This is an ambulance? Looks more like a butcher's van. What time does the horse arrive? Oh, very amusing. <laughs> I can assure you that this makes a very efficient ambulance indeed. Well, this is your lucky day then, mate. What do you mean? It so happens that we're having a large-scale air raid practice next Saturday, and we need all the extra transport we can get our hands on. So report with your ambulance and a party of six men to act as stretcher bearers to Percy Street at two o'clock next Saturday afternoon. That's 1,400 hours. That's what I say. <laughs> right. We'll soon show them how efficient we are. Excuse me, sir. Yes, what? What about the petrol coupons? I mean, after all, we're going to use quite a bit of juice, you know. Ah, now, I'm very glad you brought that up, Walker. This van is going to be converted to gas. <laughs> <laughs> Gas? That's what I said. I got on the phone to GHQ earlier on and told them all about it, and in order to save petrol, they want us to take it down to the RESC transport pool and get it converted. I don't know what make you sick. I 
got a good idea, Jonesy, you said. Let the platoon use your van, you said. And then we can get some petrol cars, you said. I didn't know they were going to convert it to gas, Jonesy. Not clairvoyant, am I? Do you have to have your windows so wide open? Yeah, I like a bit of fresh air. I really muck my van about, you know. Look at this flipping great pipe. Yeah, careful, careful. That feeds a gas hoop to the engine. I know, but look where they put it. They put it right behind my seat. I can hardly sit properly. Then you better not go waving your bonnet about. You cut that pipe, we're in trouble. They ruined this van putting that gas bag on the top. Hope there are no low bridges. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Everywhere I look, there's a great sagging bag. <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep your mind off women for five minutes, can you? <laughs> Oh, blimey, your ruddy rifle. That's the third time he's nearly cut my ear off. You'll burn it mad, that's what you are, mate. What do you want to keep a bandit on it for anyway? It's dangerous. Why can't you keep it over your side? All right, then give it here. I'll shove it up behind the seat. There we are. Well, now look what you're doing. Oh, blimey, you nearly had us in the ditch then. Keep your hands on the wheel. I can't do two things at once, can I? Just keep your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel. And your ruddy burn it, you'll be the death of me. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> I don't know, I feel all light-headed. That's nothing new. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I dreamt I dwelt in marble halls with a little hot oil and a feather. <laughs> What do we stop for? She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Are you deaf? I said, why have we stopped? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up a minute. <laughs> I've got to have a look and see if anything's wrong. <laughs> God, blimey. Hey, Jones, Jones. What is it? The gas bags flop right down. Must be punctured somewhere. Hey. Blimey, look, there it is, right behind your head. That bounty must have stuck in the pipe. Is I me? I thought your driving was a bit more erratic than usual. You've been breathing the gas in. Oh, it's been a six. Uh, uh, it's, it's got a big hole, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We'd better do something. What? I don't know. Do what that little Belgian boy did in Brussels. <laughs> what, here? <laughs> Stick your finger in the hole. You're thinking of the Dutch boy and the dam, you silly old duffer. <laughs> look, I can't sit here with my finger stuck in this hole. Yeah, have a look in the first aid box. Yeah. See if there's any sticking plaster. All right. <laughs> no, uh, too small. Well, shove a field dressing round it then. Good idea, good idea. Yeah, hurry up. Yeah, all right, all right. Here we are. Now then. then. That should do it. Come on, Joe, get in. All right. Yeah. We're going to be very late, you know. I wonder what Mr. Manning's going to say. We're going to be very late, you know. I wonder what Mr. Manning's going to say. Shut up, go. Well, Mr. Manning's not going to like it. Like it? He'll do his nut. Manning. They'll be here any minute now, Warden. They better be. I've got all these volunteer carriages lying around and nothing to carry them away in. Wilson, this really is most embarrassing. Where is Jones with that pair? Perhaps he's run out of petrol. Not using petrol. He's been converted to gas. Oh, yes, of course, yes, sir. If this is a taste of your efficiency, I don't think much of it. But, uh, come along, you lot. Now, look, I told you to... Uh, come on, I told you to stand back. Arthur. Oh, hello, Mavis. What are you doing here? I've been looking everywhere for you, Arthur. You forgot to give me my housekeeping money. Mavis, please, please. <laughs> Can't you see we're busy? Oh, I can't help that, Arthur. I've got my shopping to do. Right, Mrs. Lie down on the pavement beside that old man. I shall do no such thing. <laughs> You're one of the volunteer casualties, aren't you? No, I'm not. Well, in that case, stand back out the way. Come oh, on. Look here, look here. This lady's talking to you will not stand back until she's finished. Do you understand? Oh, ruddy amateurs. Well done, Wilson. Will two pounds be enough, Mavis? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Thank you, Arthur. Oh, you know, he's a wonderful man, Mr. Mannering. See you later, then. Oh, right. <laughs> Wilson. Yes, sir. 
I do feel you should confine your domestic affairs to off-duty hours. Well, it's awfully difficult with it being Saturday, you see. Weekend shopping, you understand. Oh, I've never seen such chaos in all my life. Out of chaos. Oh, come on, move back now. Right, come on, everyone, move back now. Come on, come on. Here's the van now, sir. Thank goodness for that. And about time. Right, get this lot of the stretchers and load them in the ambulance. I'm going to see how they're getting on in the next street. Oh, sorry if we're late, Mr. Men. We had a bit of trouble. All right, Jones. You and Pike put this old man on the stretcher and then put him in the back of the van. Right, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Brown, is it? That's right. I see you've broken a leg. Oh, it's not really broken. I'm just a volunteer casualty. Yes, quite, quite. <laughs> Never had a day's illness in my life, Archie. Always kept myself fit. <laughs> well, you're in very good hands here. Right, Pike, Jones, lift Mr. Brown up. Oh, oh, very good, sir. For goodness sake, lift oh, your end, Jones. Oh, you little old man. Oh. He's not as old as I am, sir. Oh, oh. Fraser, take over. Oh, I will, sir. Right. Oh, we've got him. Right, now bring him round to the back of the van. Well, that's... Open the back doors, Jones. Yes, sir. Oh, oh dear. I'm afraid it's locked, sir. What? Who locked it? I did, sir. What on earth for? Well, I didn't want anyone touching my marbles. <laughs> You'll unlock it at once. I can't, sir. I haven't got the key. Oh, for goodness sake, there's no end to all this. Where is the key? It's back in my shop, sir. Well, go and get it at once. Yes. Take that bag there. Yeah, very good, sir. Go, Joe. Right, make way, make way there. Please, yeah, make uh, way. If I may make a suggestion, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a wee door at the back of the car behind the driving seat. We can get him into the van through there, sir. That's a good idea. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Brown, a bit of a technical hitch here. We're going to take you round to the front of the van. Nothing to be alarmed about. Oh, you carry on. I've every confidence in you. Thank you. <laughs> right, pick him up. Right, sir. Come on, Godfrey. Mr. Wilson. Take the stretcher oh. case round to the front. Right, yes, sir. Yes, oh. Open the passenger door, Wilson. Right, sir. Walker. What are you doing in there? Well, there was so much going on out there, I thought I'd better keep out of the way. <laughs> no room for work, Shies, here. You can jolly well give us a hand. OK, Gov. Now, then, we'll put Mr Brown in feet first. Right, right. lift him up. Oh, oh. Come on, Gov. Wilson, that's oh. it. Now, then, oh. push! Yeah, hang on! Oh, 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 oh. Now, look, you'll have to bend his legs round. Go on, bend them round. I don't think they'll bend that way. Oh. <laughs> but I'll try. Oh, 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 mind what you're doing. Yeah, I told you they wouldn't bend, Mr. Mannering. Oh! Are yeah, you all right, mate? Oh, I think I've damaged something. What the hell are you lot up to? I think we've put his leg out of joint, Mr. Mannering. <laughs> Try not to laugh, mate. Won't hurt so much, then. <laughs> oh, it's not funny, you know. Here, Mannering, did you tell Joseph to take that bike? Yes, Warden, I did. Well, it's mine. Ruddy liberty. You can't go around taking private property willy-nilly. Oh, never mind that now. We're supposed to be in the middle of an emergency. Anything you touch becomes an emergency, mate. <laughs> Come on, Pike. Yes. Fraser, push! Bend him round, Walker. I've oh, told you oh, he oh. won't bend any more. Oh. Oh, I'm not made of rubber, you hey, know. What's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Blimey, what are you doing to that poor bloke in there? Oh. You mind your own business. Ah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This obviously isn't going to work. Oh. <laughs> well, again. Come on, Wilson. Godfrey, lift him up. Oh. Wait, wait, oh. wait a minute. No, no, no. You'll have to go down. That's it. Oh. I've never seen anything like it. You're a bunch of raving lunatics. Do you mind leaving this to me, Warden? Come on, Pike. I've got three. Pull! <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. He's got his foot caught in a steering wheel. Oh, well, now, really, Mr. Brown, I must have you to cooperate. Well, it's not my fault. It's you, 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 you idiots. Walk him. Pull his foot out. Yeah, right out. Yeah. Here you are, mate. Twist yourself to the left. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. Not that left. The other left. Oh. Right, now I'll pull. <laughs> no. Ah, my yeah. leg. Oh. Yeah, mate, I hope you're licensed to drive this. <laughs> Just get my foot out, will you? Oh, I wish I'd never volunteered to be a casualty. Well, it gets you out of the house, doesn't it? <laughs> right, take it easy. Uh, ah, uh, that's got it. Oh, oh, it's the pain. Right, stand back, Fraser. Godfrey, I'll handle this. Walker, ease Mr. Brown down gently, and I'll take the weight. Talk about Fred Carno's army. <laughs> Have you got him, Mr. Mannerin? Yes, yes, Walker. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Brown, we nearly finished. What, you nearly finished me, you mean? I'll sue you for this. Oh, there's no need to take that attitude. Now, do watch your feet on those cobblestones. They're awfully slippery. Don't worry, Wilson. I'm pretty sure I footed it, though. Did a lot of rock climbing in my youth. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nearly there. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Ah! Are you all right, Mr. Mannering? Of course I'm all right. Oh, oh. Did you say something, Mr. Brown? I think he broke his legs, sir. What he done? <laughs> well, they've done for me. They have. They've done for me. Look, he needs a blanket. You've got to keep him warm. Cause you've really done it now, Mannering. Mm. Will you be quiet, Gordon? Mm. Come on, Wilson. Get that blanket round him. All right, sir. Don't, don't you touch me. Oh, oh, my leg. All right, mate. All right. I'll do it. I'll do it. There you are. I've never had a thing wrong with me in 40 years till this lot got their hands on me. Now my leg's broken. <laughs> and I think my ribs are cracked, too. Well, we better get into the hospital, sir. That's what you were meant to be doing. Don't do me quiet. Let me think. Now, we'll need an ambulance. Send for an ambulance. Send for an ambulance. <laughs> well, we've got an ambulance, sir. What? 
Hey, oh, yes, of course we have. <laughs> Quick thinking, Fraser. Thanks. What's happening, Arthur? Oh, Mavis, I thought you'd gone. No, I stayed to watch for a bit. Oh. <gasps> What's wrong with that poor man? Nothing that need concern you, Mrs. Pike. I have everything under control. Under control? You're a menace. You are a menace. Back me there. Back me there. <laughs> I've got the key, sir. Good man, Jones. <laughs> Unlock the back doors. We've got to get this man to hospital. He needs a proper ambulance. You leave him to us. You're not having him. He's our casualty. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be a casualty. <laughs> exactly. That proves my point. <laughs> anyway, we had him first. No. <laughs> no, you didn't. I gave him to you, so you hand him over to me at once. Oh, Joe. Okay. <laughs> Remove your hands from my stretcher immediately. That's our stretcher. <laughs> All right. You can have the stretcher. We'll take the patient. <laughs> right, man. Get him off the stretcher and get him into the van. No, you leave me alone. Do you hear, all of you? Don't you come near me. I was perfectly all right until you lot came along. You're mad. And you were locking up the lot of you. You're all mad. Do you hear me? Stark, raving, staring mad. <laughs> In that episode of Dad's Army, from the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurer, Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, James Beck, Private Walker, Bill Pertwee, ARP Warden, Pearl Hackney, Mrs. Pike, Richard Davis, Volunteer, Diana Bishop, Miss Meadows, and Elizabeth Morgan as Mrs. Leonard. The Armoured Might of Lance Corporal Jones was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snow and produced by John Dyer.